Hello, and thank you so very much for joining me tonight. I go by Luna Neat. How do you like my costume? Do you get it? Do you get it? He gets it. But um, <laughs> I had another little masky, a little masky planned. It was more like a plague kind of looking thing, but also felt so still a little childish. And you know what? It just looked too spooky. <laughs> it just looked too spooky. So I went with the backup. Hey, you know, let's just shout out Shaolin. Okay, yeah, you got it. <laughs> um, what I'm creating for you today is the Scorpio season 2020 pretend, you know, specifically Scorpio season themed video that I create every season. So yes, you know, the next one will be Sag, Capricorn, etc. Happy birthday, Scorpio. Thank you for being so deep so introspective, so um, stirring, you know, I feel like Scorpios like don't mess with people, like they don't, but like they also stir the pot in a different way. What do I mean by that? It's so hard to articulate. They're, they're mysterious, you know, they have a mysterious quality to them. It's almost like the lack of their outward poking or the lack of their outward um, <laughs> how do I put this? The, it's, it's more like reserved, right? So you're like, what's, so what's with you? You're awful quiet. What are you thinking over there? What do you, what do you hide? <laughs> you know, like that's kind of the, the thing that we're drawn to about Scorpio energy sometimes is that it is below the surface. It's deep. There's a lot going on behind the curtain in Scorpio energy. So it kind of draws our attention to us and to draws our attention to it. Gosh, I can't talk already. That's going to happen though. So let's just keep pushing forward. <laughs> and that's what kind of stirs sometimes, you know, it's subtle. It, it's, it's, it's like, it's like from around the corner. It's like a raptor, you know, it has this just like this other quality to it. I think that there's a few signs that we could say they are in this world, but not of it. And I'd want to say Scorpio is certainly one of those signs, uh, you know, for the people, but also the energy in general that we're going through. And that's a lot of what we can experience through this time period. So just so you know, Scorpio season runs from October 23rd until November 22nd. We have the full moon, the second full moon of the month, which is actually on the evening, you know, check your time zones. But from what I've read, the evening of uh, Halloween night, so October 31st, and that will be in Taurus. And then we have the new moon on November 14th or 15th, depending on where you are in the sign of Scorpio. So the full moon energy is usually a bit more energetic the kind of energy that keeps you up at night. So the fact that it's on Halloween is quite appropriate. It's illuminating. It brings things to the surface. And it's a lot of power that we can direct to something. The fact that it's in Taurus corresponds with Taurian energy. So uh, comfort, luxury, money, stability, pace, steady pace, steady growth. Uh, and you can use that energy in a lot of different ways, but it's very good for manifesting. Absolutely. Manifesting, what I mean then is like in the material realm. And then we have um, being uh, the new moon being in Scorpio, a great time for planting seeds of seeds of your own personal transformation setting intentions to shift to um recreate yourself you know scorpio energy is very much associated with death because it is linked with pluto mars but also pluto and pluto being the planet of of death in a way oh god that sounds really spooky but <laughs> of of rebirth of a cycle closing and a new thing starting or a door closing and another opening so this is a great time to use towards your own trans transformation and in, in whatever way you know and that could be in many different avenues depending on you know what your life is what where you're at in your life and what's going on with you scorpio energy is pretty chill it's not always chill you know it, it it's mars mars is like in the background hanging out like ready to come forward i think we all have that potential for like that force to come out so just be mindful during scorpio season that you might feel like you're holding it together you're holding it together but in the background like there is this mars connection we're in a mars retrograde so it might play out a little differently it might not be so abundant but it might be very it might be even more so like who's to say right we all have different placements and stuff like that in our personal charts and all but I would just be mindful of that potential for explosive, for that potential to um, kind of lose your cool and like 
fall out of line with what you've been creating. I'm not trying to say that there's a facade here, but you know, we all kind of have to play certain roles at certain times, or you know, when you go to work, you have to kind of put on your work face or whatever. Or if you're, um, I don't know, like in positions like that, I guess. Um, sorry, I'm not really drawing a lot of great examples here, but something like that where you've kind of established a, I don't want to say a persona as if it's fake, but like this version of you or like, oh, like I want to show these people I'm responsible or I want to show them or, you know, how um, mindful I can be or this or that. There is a potential to, to lose your cool in whatever way it comes up and ruin all the work that you have done to create yourself in some way. Like that is a, a downfall potential of something that we can experience. So if you've been we, you know, like in a relationship, let's say, and you've been, you know, like saying like, oh, I'm going to be more patient. I'm going to be more compassionate. I'm going to be this. It, there is a, this like underlying explosive quality that could certainly come through that kind of brings your shadow to the surface. So one of the best things we can do during this season is work on our shadow work. Be vulnerable if it is a relationship, if it is something maybe not work because like who talks about their shadow at work? I mean, you know, I do as my work, but like <laughs> I can't picture like the office cooler talk necessarily being something like that. I hope you know what I'm trying to say here, but integrate your shadow, like reflect on it. If you are in a relationship and you feel like this is resonating with you with that underlying thing that you don't want to, don't want to come out or even, you know, with your kids or something like that, like your relationships in general, be vulnerable, share the things that are challenging for you. Like put it out on your sleeve a little bit more. Don't be afraid of being judged. Love yourself enough that even if judgment came, you'd be like, well, screw you anyway. Like this is me. Like, what are you going to do about it? Like, what can, what can I do about it? This is is me. I'm not a bad person. I know that, you know, and you have your inner um, resolution, you know, inside of you. So that's just a little um, recommendation on what's been coming through. Like I said, this is a great time for transformation in general. We might see a uh, lot, you know, any sort of transformation in our lives that might come up. There's so many different, again, pathways for that to present itself to us. But just be prepared for it. You might feel called to it. You might be making changes on your own. You might be making new commitments to yourself. You might be just working through the process in some way of recreating yourself, of your own personal death and rebirth, which is a beautiful process. Of course, I know I say it all the time, but Dynamic Thought is a great book to help you through that process if, if it resonates with you, if that style of, of writing in general resonates with you. Around Halloween as well, there is this, this thinning of the veil that I'm sure that you've heard of where it's more easy to access the spirit realm. So you might feel called to do something like that, you know, for those of you who dabble. Personally, I don't like... I work in the in more in the subconscious. Like I'm more about the subconscious. I'm more about what my mind can show me, you know, and like the the portal, the freaking like wild connection that like is within me and is in you. But we all access that in different ways, of course. I'm not judging or, or saying there's one or, or you know way to do it. But spirit work in general is potentially dangerous if you're not clarifying what you're inviting to come through or the messages so if you are called to spirit work in any way and you're new to it you know you're getting started with it please use your intentions your words very very specifically very deliberately to invite communication or experiences only with benevolent forces only with that which has your best interests only that will of like the highest vibrations, you know, or of vibrations of love and um, positive or, you know, um, loving, in uh, loving intentions for yourself. That is very important because you can be like burning candles or lighting incense to spirit. But what spirit is this? Is, you know what I mean? Like, so be very specific. That veil is thin. You want to make sure, you know, vampire rules that you're only inviting what is, um, you know, beneficial, right? Or, or yeah, beneficial in your life in whatever way. 
as the veil is thin, you might be experiencing a lot of really intense dreams or different dream experiences. They may be tied to things that you're experiencing in your life already. They may be super bizarre and like past life weird coded secret messages and stuff like that. I would say to just embrace that. Again, set intentions before you go to bed if you're looking to have some kind of experience. I don't say I don't say looking to have some kind of experience as in you're creating a tunnel vision of sorts for an experience, but a a empowering experience, a um, clarifying experience. You know, not like a oh I want to do this that that. Sometimes when we restrict, it, it's just like it doesn't happen, and we feel bad about it, or or we kind of get let down over it, you know, and you can't really rush certain things. So setting intentions for the dream work. Jeez Louise. Somebody keeps commenting also about like the traffic. Like, dude, I don't know what to tell you. It's the street that I live on. I don't have an office. This is my office at home. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to be snotty. Killer bees out to get you, right? Like, give me, give me a break, right? So, <laughs> um, dream work. Um, a great dream book that I love is called Active Dreaming by, I think his name is David Moss. Definitely Moss is the last name. Um, and again, setting intentions, creating the parameters for the experience, empowering yourself as well. For those of you who resonate as empaths or empathetic people in general, you might find yourself, and we all, honestly, we all will likely find ourselves very sensitive during this time. Scorpio is very freaking sensitive. It might not really wear it on its face, you know, or it might not be this like outward expression of sensitivity necessarily, you know, unless they feel called to share unless that energy feels called to present itself in some way. Um, but it, it's, it's highly sensitive, you know, highly sensitive, but it's a little bit like, um, what's her name? And like the Powerpuff Girls, like the green one, is that Buttercup? Shit. I, damn. The green, the pre, the green Powerpuff Girl, right? Like a perfect example, like sensitivity, like will fight you with tears in their eyes. <laughs> You know what I mean? So you definitely want to just make sure that that's something that you're mindful of, that you're processing, that you're letting out, that you have methods for journaling, that you have uh, an awareness of so that explosive um, other side of you doesn't come out in a way where um, you can't control it, you know, like you don't always want to hulk out necessarily. Sometimes hulking out is good for you, don't get me wrong, but if you're, if you know it's not <laughs> what you want to do, it's just good to know that that is the potential so then you can be, have that awareness and move in ways and con conduct yourself in ways that supports the fact that like, yes, this is a very sensitive time and it's also a very explosive time. Plus like the, even if you think of like transformation and how you don't come out transformed like, oh, like rock solid, like you're gooey, like you're, you're sensitive, you're, you're like, bleh, you know, like, like the top of a BB head or um, like skin that has just like just been re you know after you have like a peel or something like that and the skin is like very tender or very um you know uncalloused at this point so you know remember that or keep all of this in mind if it resonates with you and i hope that that serves you in some way but let's stop chatting chatting and we'll get over to the tarot cards all right so i'm just gonna switch my camera so you can see the deck here or the piles to choose from and you know yeah. <laughs> All right, so here we have our four piles for you to choose from. Pile one is a, I believe, Loden stone, garden stone, garden quartz, um, shaman, shaman quartz. It's basically a natural clear quartz point with these terminations and include, excuse me, and inclusions within the stone that give this garden like quality. Definitely great for transformation, I would say, in the material sense, like the material transformation manifesting in the material realm in general, as far as transformation goes. And then for pile two, we have turquoise, natural turquoise, also very good for transformation, but more of a using your words, using how you express yourself, the... Um, the projection, the mental field as well of the transformation process. So this is more like material, this is more mental, um, expressive. Then we have a Nu'umite palm stone, which is very good for manifesting, 
very, very, very protective. So something I would recommend if you plan to do any work in the spooky realms, don't be afraid of it. Don't let me put any fear whatsoever into your head. Just take precautions, you know, that's all. And then we have this black garnet, super cool looking, very good again for transformation in a grounded sense, in a foundational sense, I want to say, like the structure of the realm. It does have a lovely, um, what's the word, like uh, prosperous, like um, abundant uh, wealth even, or creating some kind of real stability of the foundation through this stone in general. But of course, see how you resonate with them. So again, pile one, two, three, and four. If you need to pause the video, please do and select which one resonates most with you. All right. All right. So for those of you who chose pile one, the uh, shaman quartz or um, guardian quartz, here is your reading. So the overall energy for you that I'm seeing here in these cards is the queen of cups, which says that you're in touch with your emotions and you're in touch with taking ownership for them, you know, and, and maybe even more so importantly, or rather in, in the importance of this, in this card, you're, you're caring for yourself. You're caring for yourself on an emotional level. You're ruling yourself, overseeing yourself as guided by your emotions, tuned into your emotions. What, even when you're manifesting, it's not necessarily of like, what can I do? What can I experience? Uh, you know, in this kind of like, I don't know, like aggressive sense. It's more of you're, you're in a place of knowing like what will bring you fulfillment or even if you can't identify what it is, how do I want to feel? I don't like feeling this way. I don't like what this brings out of me. I want to move into things that um, fulfill my soul, you know? So it's just this like high, high, high aspect of understanding yourself on an emotional level, understanding that you need to nurture and care for yourself. Perhaps you have been really putting in the work for your self-care or your like mental health or taking breaks when you need to and things like that. All right, then we have two oracle cards. I'm not going to read any cards in reverse because it is Mercury retrograde right now and like why add confusion to the pile here all right so um I was gonna just tell you something but let's just I'll save that for later all right so the we have in the hermetic tarot the moon the three of wands and the chariot which this is all very watery okay we have obviously the queen of cups but the chariot is represented by Cancer and the moon is represented by Pisces. So it's almost like you have in this Scorpio energy field, you have the other signs with you, which is quite interesting there, you know, like quite the other water signs is what I'm trying to say by that. Because even though we're all, you know, the signs, <laughs> there being three in each uh, element, right? Scorpio is diff very different from the other water signs. They have their same like meeting points or whatever, or or similarities like being sensitive or being in the mystic, just like mystic individuals in general and mystic energy in general. But um, it's just really fascinating this way how it's all together. And even so, the three of wands in the middle here with the three kind of energies coming together. This is just like really fascinating to me. All right, so let me just have a little peek at this. So the message here is that you're, you're in tune with your emotions, you're understanding perhaps like what you're having realizations at the very least of, you know, what feels good, what doesn't, what are you self-sabotaging over and what is something that, you know, you feel called to truly experience on an emotional level and put the energy into to push forward in perhaps even when it feels a bit, um, like too much so you want to back off right like it's too like too sensitive too vulnerable too all oh, they know too much about me like whatever it is like this exposure or something but you're you're finding out a lot about yourself the moon card is very much about the subconscious drawing from the subconscious so you have maybe already been doing shadow work feel very called to shadow work um the images in this are just like so cool and esoteric there's like 
there's also like this realization of dawn here with the moon card for some reason like you know when um like you can see the moon in the morning and you're like oh like you can see it throughout the day a lot of the times right but in general like when you see it and you see the sun kind of rising or it's just like the dualistic nature of like sunrise or whatever and like the moon being out it just feels like this very balanced place even though it is so subconscious it's like you're carrying forward the messages of the subconscious into daylight in some way then we have the three of wands, this very intense energy to establish yourself, to put something out there, to create, to show, um, in a way, you know, and I don't mean show in a showy way, if that makes sense, but to like embody is probably a better word that I could choose here to embody your strength, to embody the stability that you've created in yourself because you've connected with your emotions because you've let yourself cry it out because you've really seen your vulnerabilities and worked through them or empowered them or embraced them in some way and in that capacity like what could fuck with you like what could mess with you when you know everything about yourself and there's no shame in it and there's no um rejection of this vulnerability or all of the things that make your heart sing even if they're a little weird or whatever right you know and then we have the chariot. So the Cancerian card, this um, card of, um, or message rather of like going in, like going into it, charging in, like moving fast. So it seems like you're moving fast toward something, whatever that might be for you, whatever you've been working on or reflecting into. Um, it could be the transformation of self. It could be, you know, any anything, but like really kind of putting your all into it or just like charging into it so you're really picking up the pace here in this season so again right that connection that like oh like i am like yes i am emotional that's cool that's fine like i'm gonna use that i'm gonna empower myself that way either your dream work your dreams have been talking to you or you're just recalling them more or just something's like just coming to light or that subconscious message is being carried into the light for you for some way so pay attention to your waking hours pay attention to right when you wake up and then even like three hours into the morning or you know whatever your schedule is to just be mindful of like what's coming up what's coming up for you um if you'd like as well if you are intending to transform yourself working with those hours particularly first when you wake up to program something to affirm something to stay an affirmation or something you've written or listen to a guided meditation like whatever it is for you but this is a very um, malleable time or very um just mentally or the quantumly uh, accessible time period or to our hours of the day and you're bringing it's bringing you strength doing so paying attention just working through the, the things that you've been working through already are giving you strength you're kind of like sharpening like the bows right like sharpening creating setting your sights setting the plan and you're ready to charge in and you're going to feel yourself really wanting to charge in which is just so awesome right now for what's going on Okay, quite interesting here. So um, the card that has been presented is not the most fun card here in this deck. So this is the Holly Simple um, Fuzzy, no, oh my gosh, Amulet, excuse me, Amulet Friends Oracle Card deck. And the message is pain here, you know? And I think that that's something to speak through, like the emotional connection. When you really go into your emotions, you're going to explore pain just as much as you're going to explore your happiness. So maybe this is a message of something you've learned from a painful experience in this season or leading up to this season. Or this can be something that you're okay to you know, maybe it's like this old chapter in a book of your life that you've always revisited when you feel emotional, but never fully, you know, like close the door on, never fully like gain closure with. So it might be time if it speaks to you to face that pain. You can face it with a ritual, you know, great time to work with ritual rituals. You can face it in your dreams if you want to set an intention to do so. But remember, like you're in control. This isn't like, oh, 
you know, something spooky. It's just like, there's a lot of the, the biggest, biggest, biggest lessons come from the painful experiences, you know, and you learn so much about yourself. I do feel like this is much more of an emotional thing than like a physical thing, but you know, emotional pain can manifest in the body, especially if we're pushing it away. If we're like, oh no, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with it. The pain will manifest in other realms and other, um, you know, uh, channels. So pay attention as well to your body. If your body is speaking to you with migraines or some like bizarre pain that you're like, what? Like, what is this? Like, I didn't hurt myself. Like what is going on? Or maybe you do hurt yourself. (laughs) Maybe you keep banging your foot over and over again, or like, I don't know, stubbing your toe. I mean, pay attention, you know, pay attention to the pain you're feeling within. If that comes up, perhaps there's been something recent. Pay attention as well to like the physical bumps and like odd pains and stuff. If it is physical, simply Google metaphysical association to back pain or whatever it might be for you. And it can pull up some potentially like really helpful things, you know, or like it, um, just to give you more information, put you in the right direction for resolving things or, or just explaining like what it might be associated with if you're not really drawing any connections necessarily. But I do feel like this is a pain that's kind of already been experienced or is like, you're kind of ready for it. You know, it's not this like disempowering thing necessarily. It's funny. The image here is a frog with like really psychedelic eyes, like red eyes though. Like it's been up all night and a scorpion with a heart on it. (laughs) That's like hugging the frog and in the background, a lion. And I think that speaks so much to like strength, you know, and that there is this strength that comes through after we've purged through cry or after we've really let something finally hit us, validate the fuck excuse me, excuse me, validate the pain and go from there, you know, and then your other oracle card here, so this is the trust your vibes card deck, is to call on your runners, it's okay to, you know, you have a lot going on here and you're preparing for something, some of you though might feel like, yeah, I I do feel like I want to move forward, yeah, I I don't know, yeah, like that, that is kind of resonating, but I'm not ready or it's not, it's not aligned yet, assign the universe, assign your subconscious, or call on your your guides to clear pathways for you. Maybe you work with Ganesh, or maybe you just work want to work with like a road opener candle or something for that um, to do a ritual with so that when the chariot, when you're ready to ride in on your chariot, and like you will be guided by your emotions if you're feeling like, well, how do I know when? Your emotions are going to guide you when it's time to move forward. Call on your runners, call on them to open the roads for you, to get you the parking spot, to get you there on time, to like whatever it is. I know that sounds, the parking spot sounds corny, but like call on it ahead and expect it as you're moving through. Expect the steps to to present themselves as you're trusting that this is the direction you're meant to go in and all of it will just validate so, 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 so much as you're going through it. All right, so pile one, I hope that that resonated with you. Okay, pile two here. You chose the turquoise stone. The raw turquoise. Hmm. Okay. And again, I said this in the other uh, reading, but I'm not going to read anything in reverse. Mercury is in retrograde and like why make things more confusing for myself (laughs) or you? (laughs) Okay. So the overall card of you, your energy, or the theme that you're working on right now is the Five of Cups. And this is the um, Mystic Mondays tarot deck here, if you're curious. And this is very much about balance, you know, like balancing your emotions, feeling kind of manic potentially, like not necessarily like you feel balanced, but it's like you're in this like balancing act where you feel yourself kind of going one way, then you feel yourself going down. You have energy, you don't have energy. You're trying to maintain equilibrium. It's it's a struggle though. It's a struggle to maintain, to not get too hot, to not get too cold. And that might be something you've been dealing with lately or something that you might be experiencing through this Scorpio season. You're in a position of really trying to hold it together to not have like manic emotions, to not, um, you know, to just like temper your emotions, temper your perspective, your um, ability to be optimistic. You know, you might feel like very optimistic one day and like 
like the next, like it's so not like the next, right? And it just might be a struggle for you at this time. Not a struggle, excuse me. Excuse me for using disempowering language, but more so just like a thing, like a freaking thing. Like it's not just like a set it and forget it thing. It's not just a smooth sail. It's like, oh, I really gotta like drive a manual here and like pay attention, get that clutch in and like all this stuff, right? Okay, so the tarot cards here, and I'm using the Hermetic Tarot for this because it's Scorpio season. I wanted to get a little, a little more, right? A little more in there, <laughs> in that phase. We have the Princess of Cups, the Ace of Cups, and the Devil. All right, so I'm just gonna zone out a little. I don't usually, I don't use these cards very often, so forgive me. Just kind of have to stare at this for a sec. But the Princess of Cups says that there is this. There is this um, newness, you know, this new perspective or this new awareness or this new experience or um, uh, new side to you, new new things being presented to you potentially in general, but of like on an emotional level. And maybe that's what's throwing you off, you know, like maybe... Maybe it feels like this very like big like back and forth because then we have the Ace of Cups, which is just about like this gift, like this overflowing gift of like emotional fulfillment and getting something and it's like the start of something too, you know, like, oh wow, this is here, this is amazing, but it's like fresh, you know, it's like a fresh start or um, thing, like unexpected potentially thing. So it really feels like between the princess and the ace here that there is going to be a message a offering a something that presents itself to you that really makes you feel like your cup is running over like that you are full of love washed over you in a sense um I, i'm using extremely like general terms here like you're full of love you might be very excited about something you might be very um become very aware of how you feel about something right but it's gonna kind of come in this pre like be presented to you like it's it's gonna hit you I guess it could be from within, right? Like I never like to cancel out the potential that this comes from like our own awareness, our own shift of perspective or something like that. But with both of these, just it does feel like it will come to you like a some something, like a, a message of some kind, an offering of some kind that will really give you that. Then we have the devil, right? And let me go back to the five of cups a little bit too because if that's what's going on, if you get this like this offer and then you're like, oh my God, like what is this? You're also going to feel like kind of manic, right? Which is about like what this card represents for me in this depiction here. This potential for like going too far one way so you go back the other way, you know, like like we have this capacity or this um inclination right to like not want the bubble to burst or like oh things were so good but now now it's miserable and it's like uh, it's just like a it's just an unfortunate kind of perspective that humans have you know where we want so much or we want it all or we only want to feel good and it's like that's not what we're gonna get so like let's just accept it and the devil kind of comes in for that the devil comes in like as a reminder to make you feel trapped so you have like all this potential hit you and then you feel very isolated and it's just back again to like the same freaking card here right sorry i'm like hopefully explaining this okay so what i see let me break this down let me, what i see for you this month this season rather excuse me scorpio season is you're going to be very much working on creating temperance in your emotions on the emotional plane in your emotional body and how you can do that is to remember that like everything there is ebb and flow you might get a lot of sales in your business one day and then the next week you might get nothing like it's all ebb and flow so don't look at things too small don't create too much of a pencil <laughs> i'm just like looking down this card and like saying this and it's like duh but like don't create parameters that are too rigid because <laughs> so stupid you need to be flexible and that's what this card says here to be flexible you don't want to create tunnel vision you don't want to create expectation you want to ride the waves not get 
tossed around by the waves. So what I would suggest is to remember when you're feeling really good, when you're in your Ace of Cups energy, we're like just overflowing with just like fulfillment and everything. Just remember like this is the high, you know, this is the high and I'm okay with that and I love that. Let me send some out. Let me, let me appreciate it. Let me feel it. Oh my gosh, this is so good. I don't need all this though. Let me send some out. Let me focus on a meditation where I feel this cup running over and spreading out to my community and sharing this beautiful high frequency that I am so tapped into right now with my community, with my local area or something like that, or your friends and family, your loved ones, some, something along the lines of that. And when you do that, you're releasing the, the restrictions of the devil. You're releasing the um, the shackles, you know, you're releasing as well the hard crash down into the more um, undesirable aspects of, of the manic poo, you know, because it's through your choice. It's something you're, you're deliberately like sailing. You're not just like kind of like, oh, this was going one day. You're like, okay, I'm using this now and I'm using it to my advantage. And that will make the, the the descent from that high very comfortable you'll feel good about it you'll still be in a very abundant frame of mind or, or frequency in general when it comes to this fulfillment and you'll be able to move back again into that place without without so much like uh, contrast and that like uh, uh, like bouncing 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 so be very flexible don't create hard parameters don't create restrictions don't create those hard expectations like we talked about and then for the other oracle card here which is the mm, oracle friend holly simple oracle friends amulet friends excuse me amulet friends oracle um we have purpose and stay in alignment with your purpose through a vest just keep remembering like what it is you want to work through like how do you want to even just if it's the purpose of managing and tempering your emotions or your frequency you know keep it all in mind keep what is so so meaningful to you in mind and commit to that follow that because when you're on that that journey it doesn't the ups downs are just you're just like yeah that's part of it duh and it doesn't like throw you off when the downs come all right so i hope that this served you And, you know, good luck there. <laughs> good luck this season. All right, pile number three. You chose the Newton My Palm Stone. Right? I'm not going to be reading in reverse because it is Mercury retrograde. And I don't need any more doubts or confusion or anything. Okay. I can't get over how many cups are in like these readings so funny okay so your overall energy is the princess of cups okay this is the mystic mondays deck the princess of cups and it feels like you potentially either you have a message coming to you or you've received a message already or you have a message to give i feel like this might be more even representative of you if that makes sense, like you are the princess of cups and you might have a message to give someone. You might feel really called to share in some way, whether that's from a spiritual context or um, just adding the good in some capacity to get a message of support or love or compassion or understanding to someone in your life potentially or um you know even starting a channel starting a podcast or any way that you get a message out or you might deliver a message but um this might be someone in your life so you might have you might have something to share you might have something to either get off your chest or something that you've been wanting to tell someone but you know it's kind of hard it's vulnerable you know you like have felt weird about it potentially before excuse me i'm just gonna drink some of this iced tea here i'm kind of struggling with the iced tea in florida because like it is the south so every time i get an iced tea it's like really sweet and i'm like an unsweetened person and i feel bad because i get the wrong thing <laughs> all right so the cards that we have are um the four of wands 
the Princess of Swords, and the King of Cups. All right, so we have this like Aries and Venus kind of energy here. And that's just beautiful for um, joining forces, like balanced creation from both dynamics, both of your dynamics, your masculine side, your feminine side, and I'm speaking of energies here, your intuitive side and your logical side perhaps is a better way to say. But the work you've been doing or the work you're called to or your, the work you're called to develop, it's necessary for you to be utilizing both hemispheres of your mind to think about it from logical aspects as well as intuitive or more like creative or like imag imaginative aspects as well you know checking in with reality but also checking in with like your intuition and all that kind of stuff and as you create from that place you're creating structure you're creating um beauty and strength like not that you know like duh like of course they can be together but this like softness and this resilience like it's just very balanced like you're able to create something very balanced but you just need to remember to be tuning into both parts like looking at it from both perspectives and then we have as well a message that is coming to you this month some message of um technology or intellect or um like a teacher showing up or a um let me think just um like a message that you pick up on this could be from nature you know it doesn't necessarily have to be um directly from a person it could be dream work as well or something you pick up in a movie but it's definitely a message that's going to open your eyes or open your mind or just like bring a level of clarity to you to understand which certainly will benefit whatever you're building and creating here and then we have the king of cups so this oh, this journey that you go through this season you know there, there's power in it there's this um kind of like gosh it's so difficult to explain what's in my head sometimes right but there is a you're you find a strength an undeniable strength a energized strength a like let me put this out there kind of strength in your emotional or intuitive or um what am i trying to say like why why is it hard to spit this out let me back up a little bit guys forgive me so there's this element of creation right and you're called to you use your whole self so we can look at this as like your light and your and your shadow as well right you're going to receive some kind of message or clarity from an outside source right like coming to you a wake up of some kind it's gonna feel it feels almost like tied to um like a feminine element in some way like connecting with the earth potentially or connecting with the body or connecting with something just a bit more earth-based in general like the like the lessons of the earth experience kind of like coming to you and presenting a message and then this like strength of your emotions or strength of um being being like ready oh my gosh i'm so sorry i'm like really struggling to like channel this like in a better way here but put it out there like to put it out there to share the message to receive the message have the activation gain the clarity and then to share it or deliver it or embody it and just carry it with you here why is this so difficult i'm so sorry so let me know in the comments what you guys think here because this is like really challenging for me right here i feel like i need some clarity almost all right so then we have um the uh <laughs> amulet friends deck by holly simple the oracle card here is refine and improve so it does feel like that right like there's something you're creating there is going to be some message and it does feel like it will come from something in the feminine realm that could be you know a, a femme centric person it could be some type of music or artist or just again like the earth in general something along the lines of that but it does feel like it's going to bring tons of clarity and just like empower you just empower you essentially and you're going to take that into this emotional fulfillment but have I, i'm so hard to hear but have it as this like really 
this strength, like this thing that you can like wear on your sleeve that you feel like no one can mess with you and you've just got it. Like you, you have it, you're ruling it, you're owning it, you got this. There's a compassion here, certainly. It's not like a warful or a like, oh, I'm going to go out and do it. But like this like presence is probably a way that I can say it. Like you're going to embody this presence of knowing, of compassion, and it's but it's going to feel really strong and really powerful and not just like, oh, they're so sweet, but like, wow, like, like I feel it. Like I feel it around this person. I feel their comfort in themselves. I feel that they've done the work for themselves. I feel this. It radiates off of you and projects. All right. I'm so sorry that I really struggled there. It happens, right? Okay. So then our last Oracle card here, which is the Trust Your Vibes Oracle card, is fake it till you make it. So along your journey this month, you are going to experience potentially times where you're like checking the facts. <laughs> you're in your more analytical kind of, you know, framework as you're, as you're building things, as you're sowing your seeds, as you're setting things up. And you're going to be able to logically be like, yeah, I don't got that yet. Or yeah, I don't have that yet. Or yeah, we're not there yet. I'm not there yet. It's okay. Like, I don't really love the word fake it, the phrase fake it till you make it. It does sound disingenuous, but cultivate, like pull from within you, your actor, your, your, um, ability to like pretend to get into a role, to get into a character. And even if you're not projecting that, projecting that outside of yourself yet, like necessarily like, Oh, look at me. I'm a big shot. Or like, I don't know what, whatever it is. Or yeah, I have all that. Yeah. I know those people. Yeah. I have the networks. Like maybe if you're not there yet, play at least at home before bedtime before dream time feel like feel what it's like to have the things you need to be the person you're trying to create to to have your business or your work or the thing you're building here set up the way you want it and just tune into those feelings because it's creating magnetism it's creating uh, ripples like within your you know galactic dna of bringing that more to the surface we are we're malleable, you know, and our words and our thoughts and the way we feel manipulate so much about us, what's brought to the surface of us. We can pull anything to the surface, you know, it's up to us to, to use the power of our consciousness to bring the best things out of these this depth, right? So this is an encouragement to you to use your imagination, to be playful, to um, tune into those feelings of of whatever it is like the fake it to make it would be for you like faking you have this or that or that you got it or whatever and like let it feel real though like not this like oh yeah wouldn't that be great haha <laughs> let me play no like be like all right i'm i'm stepping into a different reality right now and i'm feeling this and i know that i have this and i can see it there i can see it this and kind of like work on the astral a little bit essentially create on the astral as above so below you know what i mean Geez, I'm really sorry that your reading was so complicated for me here, but I hope that whatever message was meant to come out did. I'll just have to trust a little and move on. But, you know, thank you for your patience. I do apologize there. All right, so pile three, we have our, um, you chose the really cool black garnet here. It seems like stuff like breaking through, like, rah, you know, like, um, almost reminds me of like dark the, the show dark and they had the like the god particle or whatever it was or even like venom <laughs> the movie venom with like the essence of the creatures or whatever okay right and wait <laughs> so pile four your overall energy is the knight of pentacles you have something you want to go out and do you have something you want to go out and build you feel this purpose or this mission or this desire or something like calling to you it could be big or small there's no you know it's not about that but there's something that's been speaking to you that you're kind of aware of even if it's just the feeling of it and you don't know what it is yet. But for a lot of you, it feels like you do know what it is. 
and you're kind of either preparing yourself or you've committed in some way to set out and accomplish something. And when I say that, I do mean in the physical realm to build something, to step into something, to manifest something, to go and do it. It might feel like it's something you have to journey for, like it's something you have to go to or um, you're not quite there yet or you realize that it is going to be a journey for you. So let's take a look at what the journey is for at least this season. So the first we have is the seven of pentacles and this card here in the um, hermetic tarot is about, you know, disappointment. You may have kind of coming into this season with a feeling of disappointment in some way or something really, you know, like not hashing out the way you wanted it to, or maybe you did, that's maybe why you're kind of ready to take this journey or do something because it's like, ah, that didn't really work out so good, or eh, that's just like didn't work the way you wanted it to. It just didn't flesh out. Maybe it was a group project that, you know, other people were, you were depending on other people and they let you down, or maybe you just... Maybe just like no fault to anyone here. Like this is a crazy year, but maybe you, you like you just couldn't get it together. Like maybe you had the best lead plans like all planned out and so far the month has just taken you for a spin and it was just much harder to get things done. Um, technical issues could come up, you know, like something prevented your um, success here in a physical way. Like there was a physical obstacle of some kind or something that just didn't really work out the way that you wanted it to manifest. There is peace coming to you this season. This um, this just perspective of just knowing why it didn't work, what you can do to fix it, figuring out, oh my gosh, you know what, even if it did work out, you know what, now I'm looking and now I understand it's probably not a great fit. Now I, I've realized this would have taken way too much of my time or this you you just come to this kind of place you you will experience this place of like complete understanding and calm and peace i want to say before you before you move on to your next phase or there's just like you you do find comfort you do find some kind of resolution from this last thing that did not work out for you but then comes the 5 of wands and this is like a kind of north node capricorn kind of issue going on where you there's a lesson that needs to be learned in this process of creating that is that is about discipline that is about um refinement that is about really putting in the work again and you know i hate to be the bearer of any kind of you know disempowerment let me rephrase. I hate to disempower. I don't, I'm not the bearer of bad news here, but you're going to, you're going to be working. Like you're going to work on this. It's going to feel a little chaotic at times, potentially, or you're going to feel like your hands are very tied, even though you have so much that you want to get done. And that might cause some inner conflict, of course. Right. So just remember to really be patient with yourself. Um, of course, always, <laughs> always, but particularly during any experiences of that, it is all for a purpose. Remember, it's all teaching you, it's guiding you, it's helping you really like find the right track to kind of follow through so that that success does come. There's lessons here of, of keeping things close to your chest. And that's what you're going to find out. You're going to find out that you get very um, bogged down, uh, disillusioned, influenced when you share too much or when you try to bring people on or when you try to give people a job and they're just like not cut out for it. You're better off kind of being, <laughs> it's going to sound so shitty, but you're better off kind of stepping into a bit more of a reserved place. Um protecting your assets, protecting yourself, you know, um, keeping your hand, your cards close to the chest, not, you know, I would never tell someone to not be vulnerable usually, but there is this energy here coming up for you guys specifically that is like, 
don't be vulnerable. Don't particularly let your projects become vulnerable to outside influence, to people um, kind of even like projecting onto the stuff that you're trying to create. So just just be mindful, you know, of basically, again, like protecting your energy. It's never bad to be compassionate, but don't let your compassion make you feel like you have to, you know, be the freaking martyr here and like just bleed out so that someone else can do a little work or can feel a little better or something like that. Like it's not, it's not going to be potentially helpful for you, right? In the long run for this project. Then we have, again, this is the amicable, amicable. Oracle and Amulet, Amulet, Friends, Oracle by Holly Simple. And we have Reflect. So I would encourage you, of course, reflecting is always great for all of us. That reflection is certainly going to bring the that peace, that inner peace, that inner understanding of what went wrong before in the last attempt that you were kind of like trying to grow, but that didn't fully flesh out to allow that piece to hit you through the reflection. And I would also just, you know, as you're reflecting, you're going to understand so much more about why that didn't work out and bring or bring it over into your more like, you know, like hermity kind of like, I want to work on this. I want to nurture this. I want to propagate this on my own terms before I bring it out into the light, you know, before I share it with everyone. So, you know, reflecting, always good advice. <laughs> and then our last card, which is of the um, Trust Your Vibes Oracle card deck is Body Talk. So pay very much attention to your physical body this month. I had, I gave this message to someone else as well, another pile, but pay attention. And if your body is hurting, something's coming up, use your intuition, you know, is this telling me something? But if not, you know, go ahead and Google metaphysical associations of, and then what you're experiencing. Of course, um, spirit speak or soul speak. I think it's spirit speak by Julia Cannon is a good book. Um, in my book, Crystal Intentions, there's a little bit of stuff about like the chakras and like the physical, um, the, the joints and stuff, which can give you a little bit of info. But um, just Googling metaphysical associations of what you're experiencing can give you a lot. There's um, the, oh God, the emotional code. I always get this wrong. I've heard it recommended so many times too. Um, Maybe someone in the comments could share. I know Lou and Jen um, from Patreon, like talked, we talked about, and, and Leslie, we kind of talked about this in a little group that we had that was so cool. Um, I think it's called the emotional code, if I'm not mistaken, but it can help you determine like what you're experiencing in your body, um, has like associative to, to like remove blockages and stuff. And it might just be guiding you like, you might find yourself to be intuitive, but maybe that maybe you're doubting your intuition because you probably had like feeling things were going to work out and then they didn't work out. Now you're messing up your intuition. Listen to your body, you know, let your body guide you. When you have a sour stomach, even though you're excited about something, but something is speaking to you in a different way, like a sour stomach or like a feeling of like physical anxiety it's probably telling you something, you know? So like check in with that, listen to your body. Remember how your body is so directly connected to your subconscious and your the communication from your subconscious and allow that to guide you, you know? And don't worry about the five of wands. It's just guidance to, to reel it in a little bit, you know? And don't be, don't be so open-hearted when, when it comes to this project keep it tight a little bit for this season because it will pay off and you know you could always let people in down the road a little bit but right now this is more about you you know and like you really laying the foundation for it so i hope that this helps you i hope this reading was sufficient enough you know uh, again sorry for my stumbling words all over the place but i hope that you enjoyed nonetheless i'm just going to rearrange my room here and set up for our um, asmr portion of the video our session to support all of these themes all right much love to you and see you in just a sec all right welcome back nice to see you over here let's get started with our candle
have some howlites, howlite pieces, and some red jasper pieces. And we're going to put this in our candle. So, howlite for the relaxation, the kind of dreaminess of the stone. Dream recall purposes, qualities. I put my pack of matches in a in a little puddle over there, so These are sandalwood matches. Today, as always, is to support balancing, empowerment, alignment, inner truth, the connection to inner truth, peace, calm, relaxation, healing on all levels mind, body, spirit, mental, emotional, physical. And additionally, we want to allow ourselves to work with the themes of Scorpio season so we can get the most out of this. So we can collect as we move along the wheel the experiences of transformation, of discovering things about ourselves, of peeking below, below the surface, behind the curtain, understanding truth about ourselves, undeniable truths, and these are often experienced through, you know, I don't want to say things that are not pleasant, but things that are not, you know, the typical thing we would go for, right? Like shadow work, or dream work, or divination. Not that we don't go with them, and I hope you know what I'm trying to say here, but more so facing our shadow, Facing our darkness, facing the painful experiences, and creating a new version of self, a transformative experience that allows us to take from this experience and be reborn in some way stronger, more empathetic, more compassionate, more understanding, more ready, more ready to go in. A lot of the readings had a few of them, at least a couple of them, ended with this quality of like being ready to go, ready to show up, ready to do it. And, you know, our next season will be sad season. So we're preparing for that journey, for that truth, for that experience, right? It's all, it's all so divine, right? The timing is also divine. And if there's anything you'd like to intend for yourself. Please just have a look at this little flame here and send your intention into the candle and I will let it burn out. I never blow these out so I get little ones <laughs> so they can just carry the message, carry the energy, carry the wish, the assignment through the ethers, through time and space, through multiple pathways and channels. Right. Alright, so I'm going to bring you back now. I hope.
I don't bring this out often. As you can see, it's kind of a full, nearly full package. pieces So we have this gorgeous ceremonial incense. Let's just kick this off. Very powerful. It's from Bala's Enchanted Perfumery. Highly recommend. And we're just intending to sweep this massive, like, whoosh, wind, smoke through you, through your etheric body, through your astral form, beyond time and space to empower you, to cleanse you, to entirely support you in any way you might need and yes this is an Apolloni shell I don't buy them it was a gift and I rarely use it now but I want to honor it right reclaim it but I don't really go for animal products typically right just to be clear Smells amazing. Gonna put a little more. Can you see how pretty? <laughs> Sorry, I'm making a weird face. I just hypnotized, and the smell is completely intoxicating. Connect with the darkness within you. And I don't mean evil. That's not what I mean. I mean, you know, what you've pushed away into your shadow. What can you reclaim? What can you integrate? What strength or hobby or skill have you let go to appease others, to fit in, to make someone else more comfortable? What power can you find within yourself? It's so pretty. Right? And because I don't want to sit off the 
smoke alarm. I'm just gonna put this in the room behind you. Resist Mist by Angela Mary Magic. And we're, we have cleanse, we've worked through that, but I want to bring that watery element, that Scorpio element in. So I'm going to aim down the length of your back here. Really releasing all projections in your front as well for your navigational purposes, navigational cleansing. And your palm points and like kind of bony bony shoulder areas okay you know what? the zeal area the back of the skull this through, thread this through. To deeply release on an emotional level. And you know what that looks like crying sometimes. It's okay. It's okay that when the fever breaks, we feel worse before we feel better. It's okay. <laughs> I know it's not what we want. It is certainly the movement, right? So, for those of you who need that cry or that written kind of purge or whatever it is for you, I want to just allow that to happen. Allow you to face that and empower you through it during that time. I would suggest the video that I have, The Empowered Empath, it might serve you. waves, kind of stirring up, releasing, and you know, as things stir up and be, are released, they cross our vision, they cross, can I turn this up? Yeah. They cross our awareness, they cross our consciousness, and we just release with love and appreciation. Pulling in, moving through. I wish you could smell that resin, it's so nice. Also from Bella's Enchanted Perfumery is my total favorite, the Astral Projection Mist. I'm going to use this very um, frugal, frugally because I don't even know if she's making it anymore. But I'm just going to spray three, pour that transformative or manifestive um. I'm gonna pull 
push this in with the intention of deeply connecting, of course honoring your free will, but deeply connecting to the astral form, the subtle body, the spirit body, to just access this place where so much is hidden, so much is ready for you to access, to draw from, to create in. I'm seeing kind of like, like an Iron Man looking guy. It's not Iron Man, it's more like green with like little horns here. We've made contact here. We're going to bring in our stones and sweep them through the astral body to empower your astral form through your dream work, through your shadow work, through any of the work you do or experience in this season. with our black garnet to connect with our primordial matter and of course if you'd like these in more in-depth teachings um, on patreon I do have the lesson session tier where we've talked about shadow work we've talked about alchemy now um, hermetic or the hermit hermetic philosophy hermetic principles Astral Planes. It's a project I've been doing for nearly two years now, so there is a lot of... It's almost 24. You know, at the, by the end of this year, two more months, there'll be 24 of them. But of course here, right? I hope you can see. Oh, I just got an itch. The cool shapes. Like cubes like busting out. It's so rad. Alright. We're gonna set that intention to connect with that void space within you, to empower, to tune in to all of the qualities your higher self, your soul are seeking to pull out, you know, or be expressed, or be experienced. That structure, that foundation, the things within us that carry forward into the physical realm. Just allow, and I'm focused on channeling Through the stone to support you and your astral building blocks. Feel sturdy in yourself, but also completely malleable. It's a paradox, I know. whether it's a disciplined writing practice and journaling 
um, you know, uh, support process for you to cultivate and work through, or it's just how you shift your thoughts, shift your perspective, but it's a bit mental, it's a bit seeing the bigger picture, what you have access to, what you can allow to pour out from your thoughts, from the power of the mental plane here, and the consciousness. So we're just going to channel and think of and intend that major transformative shift in thought pattern and belief system. Of course, again, only ever in alignment with your free will <laughs> and your higher self to think and speak and express and carry yourself in ways that support this transformative process for you. Let it wash over you and your consciousness to empower and support and allow those qualities to rise to the surface of your avatar. <laughs> we'll call on Newton Light. Action, you know, for sure. But for just that vastness, the vastness of potential within you to connect with that energy. To know you can call on any quality, any element, any skill. the space within you, with the magma within you, with the burning molten carbon within you, with the spirit, spiritual fire within you, and just connect, see yourself in a cave underground or out in space or in your bed or in a tent or under the stars. Just feel that oneness with everything around you and know it is all inside of you. Every star, every deity, every god, every quality, every mineral, all of it. From a spiritual quantum context to a material elemental context, feel that within you. Feel yourself expand and condense and direct and move and shift time and shift realities and bring to the surface what you desire. not flattering here. <laughs> I know it's, I was going for something spooky though, you know. Anyway, back to this focus. Here, we can connect and call forward through our manifestations. What we desire, the garden we intend to grow, the choice herbs and correspondence we choose bring out of ourself or to reclaim within ourself or whatever that might look like for you. There's a hole here, do you see? A little trigger for me. And we're gonna focus deep within the self to grow our garden, to grow, 
to move, to shift, to tend and pluck the leaves that are, are dead and withered and re-propagate um, or propagate new growth within the self to come out, to manifest here in the physical realm. Engines that support to attune yourself to your full potential here with your next step, your next phase. Full of love and heart and true, 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 true heart connection. Just channeling through into the center core, the center channel within you. Activations, clarity, awareness, power coming forth, springing forth, moving at the right time in divine timing and for you. Cup that runneth over, the emotional connections, the abundance, all of it, whatever you choose, whatever serves you. Selenite is a great stone or mineral to work with through Scorpio season. And here I have a little fossil. So we're going to do, I don't want to call it cord cutting, but we're going to just release the old, like release the hooks uh, to the old self. Again, only in alignment with your divine free will and what is right for you and your higher self's approval and all of that. But the attachments to the old, the attachments are what's painful. And when we release the attachment, we are out, we release the pain and we can move forward, right? So that's kind of the intention here to release the attachments to old ego and old patterns and old cycles that we are ready to move on from. But our fear, our ego keeps us kind of like stuck to it or attached to it because it's scary to move forward it's scary to transform right so that's what we're working with here releasing the attachments to release the pain to move forward and to fully embody this transformative experience right around the head for the illusion at the solar plexus, just focusing a bit here, the ego death, you know, and down, gonna focus in the knees, to increase that flexibility,
gonna focus on the ears. I'm just focusing mentally. This is from Deschampsia, Champsia, Deschampsia. It's the Douglas fir hydrosol. And we're just going to call in the protective guards to the north. No, I'm sorry. To the north, <laughs> south, east, and west. your head space into the astral form the astral body the spirit body to protect to activate all the protective measures that are already within you this isn't like you need help it's more of bringing it out inside of yourself okay Awaken, call the guardians within, call them out to mind the mental plane, to mind the spirit, uh, excuse me, the emotional body, to mind the health, you know, the cellular functions. Just calling it all in standing guards from deep within, from your most highest aspects of connection. Your guardian angels here within you brought to the surface. I want to say a special thank you. Someone, um, oh my gosh, the name is escaping me, but generously sent me their um, birds, um, like shedding, you know, like it's eco-friendly <laughs> from their pet and I thought this was so nice to work with in conjunction with the black feather that we started with and now we're bringing it to the light not that one is bad and one is good but the yin yang you know the following the movement and we can focus on this white feather as the awareness of the new beginning of the spark of inspiration or the um, embodiment of self of this transformation right most empowered state always here filling your energetic body with just nice fresh energy just flow harmony balance even in chaotic times inner peace even in times of transformation Good measure. 
over here. digging out of your kitchen cabinet, your big water bottle you haven't used in a while. You might be investing in a new water bottle or a big glass or a decanter, something that you can encourage you to drink, really drink your water, really hydrate, really connect with that flow of water during the season to support you. if you can, or a lake, or any water. Not all of us are so fortunate, right? Or, you know, have that access. But connecting with water in whatever way that you can, the season will benefit. Just the rain, even. Well, I hope you enjoyed this season's video. I'm so sorry. It is it is harder for me to create these in Mercury Retrograde. There's really not much I can do about that. So I'm sorry if this wasn't up to par, but... Or if I feel like it wasn't for some reason, but I hope it was okay. I send you so much love and appreciation. My deepest, deepest gratitude, especially to you and the Patreon community. I'm so grateful for your support, especially through such a chaotic year. It has been so saving and I've also been able to recently pass off some of my edits, probably not this video, but some of my edits and that has hugely benefited my my energy and my ability to create and stuff. So thank you so much. Much love to you all. Thank you for your comments, your support, everything. Like thank you, thank you, thank you. I can say it enough. Alright, so from the very, very, very bottom of my heart, I bow to the divine and the light and the darkness within you and within me and this weirdo life that we're a part of here, right? <laughs> Much love to you. 